I'm somebody who has just recently rejoined the RTX club with my 3080, and so of course I have a very vested interest in whatever Nvidia decides to cover at this year's CES. And it was fine, if not slightly underwhelming this year. So I just want to do a chat with my boys about, you know, some of the improvements they made, things they're going to be releasing. So there's like the reflex low latency, the resizable bar a little bit, the games, the laptops, you know, just a, a little bit of a coverage. I think there was a lot of interesting stuff. Let's talk about it. The main thing I really want to focus on are those games, baby. And I also think that that might be where the biggest problem lies, um, especially looking to the future and what 2021 has to offer to us. Nvidia shared that there are currently only 36 Arteon games. I will say that they did hit most of those big titles that launched over the holidays like Cyberpunk 2077, Watch Dogs Legion, and Cold War. But I don't know, with that I still thought we'd be kind of a lot further by now. I remember getting the 2070 and you know it was like, oh there's five or six games that you can choose between. And I was like, okay, they're gonna, they're gonna speed this up. And after two years, we are at 36. I've gone ahead and tried most of these games, played most of them. Some of them are really good. I did a video on Minecraft RTX. It's stunning. It's simply beautiful. So it, they can implement that even in the past games and do something really cool. Then I'll play something like World of Warcraft Shadowlands. And I absolutely going from like normal, you know, middle of the road uh, graphic settings to RTX on the ray tracing, all that stuff, ultra, just everything blasted. You can't tell at all that it's even on well except for like the shadows cast from the sun down to the person to the ground it's like a little bit more you know dynamic to what the player model is doing god who cares so just because it has rtx on doesn't mean it's rtx worth it but okay i don't want to get caught up in all the the problems we've had before and you know it, things not working good whatever the important thing is what do we have to look forward to what big games are coming out that we can look forward to having good RTX, you know, implementation that they're they're going to go out and say, hey, look at this. This is great. What do you got? And so at CES, they decided to show off Five Nights at Freddy's with RTX. Ray tracing Five Nights at Freddy's. It's really not a good sign that when you've got all the eyes on you, you're doing a presentation at this big event and you know you better bring your absolute best stuff to this showcase. And the team comes up and says, we've got a Five Nights at Freddy's trailer to show them. Well, now everyone's certainly gonna go out and buy a thousand dollar graphics card. Just kidding, no one can buy the graphics card they want anymore. I don't wanna get into a whole thing about if Five Nights is good or not, but I do seriously doubt that very many RTX GPU owners were like, hey, please, please give us this in ray tracing so we can enjoy that game more. I just don't believe that. They of course did have other games too, like Outriders, whatever that is. Outriders is an upcoming cooperative role-playing third-person looter shooter developed by People Can Fly and published by Square Enix. Cool. Guessing people are really gonna love that. Square Enix, don't mess up, man. All you gotta do is go ask the 50 people that are still playing the 2020 smash hit Avengers. They also gave us Fist, Forged in Shadow Torch. I mean, listen, based off what I've seen, the cinematics and the bit of gameplay, it it looks pretty. So I mean, it, this could be really good. I could see how this could be cool for the game environment, for a side-scrolling game even. Give that detail, people can get real immersed in it. But a similar problem with like Five Nights at Freddy's, you've got to have fans of that niche to be able to truly enjoy that. I don't really like side-scrolling games. I don't think this is a mass appeal and not not a big ticket item to be showing off at a, a big event for like the upcoming year. Not to mention that was the entire list of upcoming games that they decided to share with us. So not not great. That was their 2021 right there. And I feel like those really aren't some of the most anticipated upcoming titles in general. I mean, like where's Hitman 3? And for God's sakes, where's Elden Ring? God, we need we need RTX ray tracing, DLSS, all that good stuff. For Elden Ring because that will be the only good game coming out in 2021. I'm already on that hype train because I trust them and I love them. Or uh, Halo Infinite. And uh, Maybe we can't be too mad at Nvidia. I've, I'm looking at the the list of the all the things that are announced and the things that we're so far looking forward to in 2021 and it looks really bad for game releases just in general. So they do also have a short list of games they're adding DLSS to, which ultimately is probably more beneficial to most people. I'd rather do, you know, 120 FPS at 1440p than 60 frames per second at 4K. But who the heck am I, you know? Something neat I saw that they didn't cover throughout their presentation, but they were talking to people with at CES 
and that was the implementation in their plan for the resizable bar for the 3000 series GPUs. And if I had to sum it up, my understanding is that it's software that opens up the communications between the GPU memory and the motherboard through the PCI port. This should lead to less bottlenecks and faster performance. AMD has already shown us their version of this where they were able to actually get like up to 11% better performance in some games. Time will tell what Nvidia is able to do, but hey, I'm all for it. Even if you give me just 5% better performance and I didn't have to buy anything, I didn't have to do anything. Thanks Nvidia. That'd be cool. I'll take it. Give me that performance, daddy. For monitors, they're trying to focus on them competitive boys with their reflex low latency stuff. No more just G-Sync anymore. We are getting into some pro MLG type monitors for the peoples. Basically, it's software that lowers and monitors latency while gaming. They're adding it to all the big shooters, and I don't know, that's important to some people, but the fun part in general is this is a new line of impossibly high refresh rate monitors that crazy people with money to burn will buy. And who the heck am I kidding? These are 360 hertz refresh rate monitors. Any dissatisfaction you might be feeling from me or negative talk towards it is just jealousy because I wanna play on those things too. I wanna play on them so bad. But I already know that there is absolutely no chance that I'm gonna be able to convince myself to purchase one of these. It's just not the type of gamer I am and I'm just, it's just not gonna happen, sadly. But I am just interested to see as we move along how this reflex technology gets implemented further and you know, once it gets added to more monitors and just kind of see how it develops and maybe it gets a little bit cheaper and we just get higher refresh rate monitors. It's, it's cool to see how far the tech will go. I don't really wanna dive too deep into the new cards and laptops, but dude, that RTX 3060 is gonna wreck shop. And also, if you thought buying a 3080, a 3070, a 3090 was hard or any of the AMD stuff, there will be no harder card to buy than that 3060, bud. Even if they made twice as many of these cards as they've been making of the other ones, the, the miners are gonna find a way to take advantage of this and they are gonna buy all of them. Or just regular people too. I'll buy, I'll buy five or six of them, why not? But what's cool about the price and performance of this is just how perfectly it's gonna hit the market. After talking to some of my friends and some viewers, I've noticed that almost everyone is still gaming on a 1080p monitor and they really don't seem to mind that at all. And according to Nvidia, the 3060 is rocking 60 FPS in 1440p high settings with the newest releases. So while it might not be hanging in that same, you know, upper echelon for the 1440p by the time we hit like next holiday season, it's still going to be rocking 1080p high ultra for uh, I mean, probably two or three years, no problem. And you're definitely gonna be able to play, you know, just drop that 1440p down. It, this thing is gonna be, this gonna, it's gonna be sweet. This is gonna be a sweet card. Then they've got their new line of 30 series laptops that are looking really nice for people needing portable gaming machines or portable content creation. Over the last few years, these laptops have gotten super thin and really quiet, really cool. And manufacturers have clearly started to focus more on what gamers want out of their laptops. And I think that's really cool. They're catering more towards the interests of, I mean, more people that are gaming now. And we just didn't really quite have that as much before. And that's that's good for everyone overall. Relatively, they can still be kind of pricey, but the amount of power that you can get for $1,000 is crazy. Their mobile 3060 is apparently 30% faster than the PS5. Oh, and I'm super excited to see more 1440p panels in laptops just overall. I've been complaining for a long time that laptops shouldn't have made the jump from 1080p to making 4K monitors on all these laptops. I feel like we, we definitely skipped quite a few steps. Now they're starting to do the QHD, which is great. You don't need nearly as much power to push that. And we can start getting these high refresh rates on QHD, which, you know, if you're sitting that close to the laptop, everyone talks about it. You don't need 4K. If you have it right there in front of your face, yeah, a 15 inch QHD is gonna be more than enough. And you're gonna enjoy that high refresh rate. I want a new laptop now so bad. Mine was hanging in there as long as it could, but it might be time, boys. They also showed off a bunch of content creation stuff, blah, 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 like eh, who cares? Just background stuff to make Adobe Creative Suite run better. It's a good thing, but it's not very exciting. Thanks for watching. Make sure and like and subscribe so that more people can watch my videos. Thanks, bye.